Assalamualaikum and good afternoon, everyone. How is everyone doing? Is everyone okay? Everyone staying safe? Uh, let me know how you feel by just uh, dropping a chat in the chat box. Uh, if you can't find it, it's in the bottom half of your screen. Just go ahead and uh, press on the chat on the chat I, chat button and let me know how you feel. So, welcome to our webinar session. Thank you all for coming. My name is Hanis, and I'll be your host and moderator today. So, uh, first of all, before I begin, I want to say thank you very much to all of our attendees today uh, who are with us in this session, and I do hope that you all are staying safe. Uh, I believe that some of us are not allowed to go out, but um, even if you can, try to avoid it and stay home. Okay, 2020 has been, uh, has been rough with us, especially for all the young graduates and students who are looking for a job. But uh, whether you are a graduate or graduating this year and are looking for a career opportunity, just by joining us today, you are already well into your journey of career discovery. So for this session, we have with us uh, General Manager of Agile Strategy and Transformation for Telecom, Ber Telecom Malaysia Berhad. Juan Shaliza, who will be sharing with us her topic, Be Ready for the Future of Work, Top Skills that Employers Look for in a Candidate. All right. So for all of you who are looking to gear yourself up to be career-ready candidates, stay tuned with us as we share with you insight and tips from Juan Shaliza, uh, also known uh, as Juan Shah. And also, don't go anywhere because we'll be sharing with you on how you can stand a chance to win a 13-inch Apple MacBook Pro mm -hmm. and other amazing prizes, as well as, as and, and as well as a free personality profile analysis from TM. Furthermore, do post your questions uh, during the Q&A session along with your name and email address because. Uh, TM will be providing you with a special token for the most, um, you know, for the lucky question. Okay, and if you don't already know, TM has been uh, nominated for the Graduate's Choice Award 2021. So do give your support by voting TM in the government link category 
government linked companies category and telecommunications category. Share with your friends because the more you share, the higher chance you stand to win some amazing prizes. So that's it. I would like to once again, thank you all for joining us today. And I hope that you enjoy this webinar. Uh, let's begin this session with a video from TM. TM has been at the forefront of every telecommunications technology evolution in Malaysia. Our digital infrastructure, connectivity and solutions will fast forward Malaysia into the Industrial Revolution 4.0 era and beyond. And TM is now 5G ready. We're ready to elevate the quality of life for every Malaysian as we progress to become a digital society, digital economy and digital government transforming into a digital nation to make life and business easier for a better Malaysia. Okay. So there you have it. The future is here. And speaking of the future, I'm honored to introduce all of you to our guest speaker for this session, Puan Shaliza or Puan Shah. Having graduated in electronic and engineering degree at University of Bristol, Puan Shah continued to complete her three masters from UITM, University of North Umbria, and George Washington University. She has been in the telecommunications industry for more than 22 years, having previously appointed as state GM for one of the states in Klang Valley, leading a team of more than 700 people. A think tank for digital commerce, Puan Shah is also an active presenter in SME growth programs in banks and has presented domestically and internationally on customer experience, transformation and management. Puan Shah, thank you so much for, having, uh, for, be, for being here to share with us some insight. Um, I'll pass the mic on to you and um, so go, go ahead for it. Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for the introduction. And hi, everyone. Um, hope all of you are having an amazing day today. Um, so for today, what I would like to share is a little bit more about the future of work and how you can leverage on the future of work uh, so that it will be um, career ready and so on. Okay, um, so maybe we'll go to the next slide. Um, which we'll share a little bit more about the history of Telecom Malaysia and how it relates to the um, the current situation. If you see, we started way back in 1946, uh, where it's called Post and Telecom. And then in 1964, uh, it becomes Jabatan Telecom Malaysia. And in 1987, we started the privatization uh, of telecom uh, and becoming Sharikat Telecom Malaysia Berhad. In 1990, it became Telecom Malaysia Berhad. And in 2005, um, it's about rebranding of TM, uh, where we have um, the tagline is like Marintis Kemungkinan or something like that. And in 2008, uh, we demerge Fix and Mobile. In 2010, uh, we launched Unify. 2016, we look into Unify Mobile. And today, we're looking at 5G and Digital Malaysia. And if you see, what's the relevance of this history to the current situation? So if you see in terms of 1946, right, until like, for example, 2005, it's very almost stagnant, even 1946 to 1964, it's almost 20 years, but it's almost stagnant where the services are being offered only uh, phone line, um, phone line and, and very basic telecommunication service. Uh, even in 1987, it's also still uh, fixed on connectivity and there's not much of rebranding and so on. But as, as we progress further and further, the pace of change becomes very, very rapid and very fast. So in, uh, instead of um, every 20 or 30 years, we rebrand or reorg and so on, it becomes very rapid. Where in 2008, we demerge fix and mobile. And two years later, we start to launch high speed broadband. And then 2016, we look into also having a mobile services where we can converge player. And now it's all about digitalization. So the pace is very rapid. And if you see uh, in the next slide, um, um, okay, uh, before that, maybe I'll share a snapshot of TM um, because like maybe I'll relate that the rapid pace with IR4.0 in the next few slides. Okay, um, for, for, 
TM is an overall, what we have today um, is a mix of a diversified customer base. So we have a Unify, where a Unify a lot of business, where we serve mass uh, residential and uh, SME customers um, at more than 2.5 million homes and more than 400,000 SMEs. And TM1, which is our enterprise arm, where we're serving around more than 11,000 enterprise and public sector customers. And TM Global, where we serve more than 500 domestic and international carriers and service providers. So uh, examples of the customers that we have for TM Global, for example, will be uh, Verizon, Vodafone, British Telecom, Singtel, and so on. And Amazon also is part of our customers. And TM1, for example, we have uh, a number of enterprises, uh, for example, like Petronas and, and, and so on. Um, so our customer base is diversified. We serve a lot of um, areas and the solutions that we offer uh, for the different line of businesses are also different. Um, uh, for example, at TM1, we, we serve uh, solutions that are related to IoT, cybersecurity, um, on top of the normal connectivity. And uh, our workforce is around 22,000. And uh, we have around 32% women in management role. And uh, in terms of the mix uh, of people, we have 54% non-executive and 46% executives. So this is a snapshot of TMS and overall uh, from where we were back then and, um, and, and today. All right. Okay, then we go to the next slide. Uh, which is um, related to building a digital savvy workforce. So uh, as I've mentioned, um, the pace of change is very rapid. So from 1946 to now 2020, uh, we have evolved. Uh, maybe before that, all of the way we, com uh, in the way we communicated was uh, using fax machines or even 1946, maybe we communicated using telegrams or something like that, or even Morse code. Uh, I, I'm not sure because I wasn't there back then. But right now, the way we communicate is all about uh, using digital tools, collaboration tools. Uh, for example, we have uh, our flow uh, where, we, um, where we have internal communication inside there. Like for example, during MCO, we do check-in. Uh, so we check-in, check-out using flow. And uh, we also have uh, approval using flow. So a digital signature using flow. And we have our era where inside here we advertise job vacancies and uh, everyone can rate their happiness level. Uh, and also uh, we have our internal, internal development plan um, inside era. And we also have the Medic where we can have a view of all the medical services that we can enjoy as an employee of the organization. And we can look at the history of our medical visits and so on inside there. And we have gems where we apply leaf on the go. Uh, we can, uh, we can um, uh, apply for claims and so on inside gems. And we also have grow where employee manage performance goals and appraisals. Um, back then when I started working in TL, like which was way back in 2000, in 1997 actually, uh, after I graduated, um, all performance management was on paper. So we have to pass paper from, from my side, pass to my boss and then my boss sign and then go up to the VP and so on for, the, for him to sign and so on. But now no more. It's all about using digital tools and collaboration. So um, it is actually part of uh, making sure our workforce internally are also savvy in, in um, using digital tools and so on. All right, so maybe you can go to the next slide now uh, where we would like to see why why the buzz about what's the buzz about digital? Why is it so important? Um, the reason why is because uh, of the evolution in the industry. So we see that way back in uh, a few hundred years ago, there's Industry 1.0, which is all about mechanization, about steam power, and so on, weaving loom, and and um, things that are all about manual things and so on. Um, and uh, as we move to Industry 2.0, we have production, mass production, and we have electrical energy um, and assembly lines that we can produce a lot more. But in industry 1.0, it's all about um, the way we do things, it's all about using uh, uh, hard labor. But in industry 2.0, we have this manufacturing evolution, evolution in manufacturing, where there is this mass production where people can produce uh, in terms of clothes and so on. Um, uh, a, lot of uh, a lot of the production can be done uh, for a lot of people. Uh, and
And then as we move to Industry 3.0, it's about automation, about computer, electronics, and so on. But Industry 4.0 is all about digital. It's about how do we use our um, cyber physical systems, Internet of Things, how to use our networks to drive outcomes and values and so on. And it will also relate to um, the sensors, uh, sensor that can um, uh, sense a lot of things. For example, like we have computer at a um, sensor at the size of a sand where you can put it, you know, um, at the um, agriculture farm and you can test the pH of the water, uh, of the soil, um, uh, the humidity of the soil and so on to see how best uh, we can make sure that the, the plants that we have um, can be harvested in a better way and so on. And then we have quantum computing and a lot more um, new things um, that are related to digital. And Internet of Things is that we have wearable, wearable, uh, wearable internet, like for example, like um, watch that can track your GPA, your heart rate, your health conditions, and so on. And that will be passed to um, the cloud and in a single cent central repository uh, where it can be linked to a number of things and then have a common view of where we are today in terms of our, our health and so on. And for example, like uh, if you see right now, my suggestion, you're able to know where uh, where you've been and then if, which helps contact tracing and so on. So Industry 4.0 helps in a lot of things. Um, and uh, maybe I can go to the next slide, which shares a little bit more about uh, the drivers for future of work um, in the areas of uh, Industrial Revolution 4.0. So the first one would be artificial intelligence. It will be the machines that can think. Um, so uh, we have chatbots, for example, like before that, before this, uh, all calls and complaints are being managed by live uh, people, all right? Um, um, I, I, I can see that there's a lot of comments on the slides, uh, not very clear. Um, is my uh, voice clear or, or only the slides are not very clear? Maybe you can can just share um, inside the chat, all right? Okay, um, so in terms of artificial intelligence, it's about machines that can think. So we have machine learning, we have deep learning and cognitive learning. So like the machines that can behave like human in terms of the way they think. And for example, in terms of artificial intelligence, we have uh, in some of the shopping malls, for example, or restaurants where people, um, they don't, do not, uh, they no longer uh, use waiter, waitresses, or cooks, um, but they have automated robots um, that can help in terms of uh, managing the overall restaurant. Right, so that is being uh, one of the key drivers of your artificial intelligence. And then cloud, where you can put inside the cloud uh, all the solutions and and the key files and so on inside there, and you can use uh, collaboration um, tools and agility. Uh, to drive uh, future, um, the, the work that you have. Um, for example, the collaboration tools that we commonly use would be uh, Teams, Skype, um, that one would be for communications and online meetings. Uh, we also have tools, for example, like Trello or Jira for us to look at how we can drive our, our um, tasks and deliverables in a more productive way. Um, and there's also other things um, that, that can be done. Uh, through collaboration and agility. Uh, we also have robotic process automation to help to simplify um, the processes that we have and automate them and save a lot of time uh, from, uh, for example, like uh, we have tasks that maybe utilizes around 100,000 uh, minutes or hours, which can be say, uh, simplified, the task can be simplified and we can then automate them so that 100,000 hours can be used for more productive work. And just to share with all of you within our organization, we, we uh, use a lot of robotic process automation to help to drive uh, simplification in work and also in terms of um, saving the, the time and, and using it to do more productive things. So we have, uh, we have a lot of uh, robotic process automation squads in our, our team. And there's multiple realities, for example, the augmented reality, virtual reality, and mesh reality. So for example, a virtual reality, um, so we use virtual reality for training 
um, uh, training, for example, of 5G solutions, so use uh, virtual reality, for example, and also virtual reality can be used for other parts of training. For example, like if you're working in oil and gas industry, um, you would be able to use the VR um, to, to enable you to have a view of the situation in the oil rig, so you'll be able to visualize and experience it uh, in a better way. So the training will be better and it will be a reduction in cost because you don't even have to go to the oil rig to understand how it is being run, to understand the real situation, but using the VR, you'll be able to do that. And augmented reality as well will be able to facilitate you in terms of visualizing, uh, visualizing um, how um, things will work in real life by, by combining the augmented reality and the current uh, situation. And then in 3D printing, for example, um, you would be, uh, it would impact in terms of the construction industry, for example, where the buildings and houses are being printed using 3D printing. For example, there is an entire village in Mexico um, where the whole village was printed using a 3D printer, was produced using a 3D printer. So the house was like in the size of 900 square feet and it was produced using 3D printer. And uh, there are also organs that are produced, um, so artificial organs that are being produced uh, using 3D printers. So for students, uh, medical students, they can use these artificial organs to understand further um, how these organs work, um, and then the, the structure of the organs. So you don't really need a cut, cut of if I'm not scared, a, a body, a dead body, to, to uh, investigate and, and so on in the, the medical condition of person. And in terms of uh, the, for 3D printing, there's also printing uh, of motherboards, uh, circuit boards, for example. Like way back when I was studying on my circuit board, I had to wait for a few weeks um, to get it ready after designing it. But right now, like for, my, for example, my son, when he's dressed engineering as well. So uh, when he, he just designed it in a computer and it can be 3D printed very fast. All right. And then in terms of internet of things, it's all about sensors that can detect a lot of things and, and make intelligent decisions uh, in terms of um, um, yeah, quite a number of applications, for example. In terms of Internet of Things, it can be drones, uh, it can be autonomous uh, vehicle and so on. So, so there's a lot of application in terms of the future of work um, that can um, impact us in the long run. All right, our next slide would be our next. Okay, so how is it being done in our organization? Uh, so like what I've mentioned just now, we have digital meetings and approvals. Um, so we use a lot of digital platforms like Teams, Skype, um, Grow uh, for performance management, leave approval and so on, and Flow for check-in and document approval. And we have online storage. Uh, so we have SharePoint, for example, to share our, our documents um, so that everybody can access. And everyone, when we do discussions, we can amend real time. Um, and Agile, where we do cross-functional teams working together. And uh, we work in sprints. Um, so we use the Agile Scrum methodology so we'll be able to um, create better transparency and, and also making sure that uh, the people are able to drive outcome in a better way. And uh, the next slide will be sharing a little bit more about the virtual learning. So we have online learning platforms. So we have virtual lab programs, um, bite-sized learning, and we also have uh, gamifications in our learning uh, and augmented reality so that people are not so bored when they learn online. Because online learning can be very boring, but it can also be interesting. So. Uh, virtual learning is very important to us, and we have um, we have an agile squad looking at uh, digital learning as well. And uh, inside Era, for example, we have bite-sized learning. Um, and sorry, uh, at Dubai, we have bite-sized learning, uh, so that we'll be able to um, make sure that um, the learning because some people get very bored if you look at very long. A uh, winded video, like two to three hours of uh, one whole day, um, and so on. So, of uh, uh, videos. So, what we can do is that we have I do bite where we have bite sized learnings and short videos on selected topics so that people can watch 
and learn as they go. And then in terms of the robot process automation, it's all about automation of the processes um, and, and uh, improving um, the, um, the way we do things and automating certain things, that, things that are mundane, for example, like the normal day-to-day -day reporting, uh, we have automated most of them. And right now we use UiPath. Uh, we also have this um, RPA community within our organization where the RPA community, um, they work together to, uh, to look at programs uh, or in, uh, areas that we can automate and, and simplify further. And right now we have 25 RPA squads within the organization and it's expanding as well. And uh, we also have gig economy um, where uh, gig economy is um, to uh, tailor to the younger millennials, right? And the Gen, Gen Z, and I think the, the latest generation is Gen Alpha, if I'm not mistaken. So that people like to work as freelancers as well and uh, do beyond their current role. So we have uh, an app uh, to support that. So we have Do It. Um, it's about um, generating additional income. For example, by being a, a reseller of our service, we can get commission for it. Or if you want to promote our um, facilities, for example, we have buildings and so on, so um, that we can rent out to others, um, uh, the, the halls and so on, so that then you can get commission for promoting it to others. And inside the gig economy, some people have commissions. They, they were able to reach uh, achieve quite a number of commission as well um, uh, through do it. All right, okay, the next slide. I would like to share an overview and illustration of the future of work for you to have a look. Just now, right? Um, there's a lot of things that are being automated, like restaurants, 
doesn't really need uh, people to be cooks or chefs or waitresses and so on because because you just uh, you know include inside the program a program on uh, and on the recipes and so on and then it can be automated um, so that will be the impact of the future of work where a lot of things are mundane they are basic that may be replaced by robots and uh, and uh, ais and so on but there are also other areas that require still require us humans uh, to do the job uh, so for example in the next slide um, if i'm not mistaken these are the seven key areas of future jobs um, this is taken from world economic forum if you want to have a look at all the updated uh, future of work and all the update, updated articles or insight on future of work and so on, is the World Economic Forum is a very, very useful source of information that will help you um, understand what are the key areas that are necessary in the future. So if you see here, although artificial intelligence will take over certain jobs, but we still require people in data and AI. So in terms of the number of job opportunities, you see here in 2022, it is forecasted that for every 10,000 work uh, people, you will require 123 um, data and AI specialists or experts. So the emerging jobs will be more on the data scientist, data engineer, big data developer, data analyst, data consultant, insight analyst, and so on. So if you see, it is more about having that specialization in data and AI, so that then you'll be able more uh, to build more robots and more um, data-driven decision-making and, and applications and so on. And then um, you still require sales and marketing and content, but the sales and marketing content is slightly different. It's no longer the normal sales, but it's more about how do you use social media um, and to generate sales. Um, how do you, okay, I think some of this, the, the people say, shares that the slide is not clear. Um, maybe what we can do, I, I don't know whether it can be done or not. Um, we can email the slides if, if, it's, uh, if it's okay with Talent Bank. I'm not sure, maybe, maybe we can see how best to facilitate like in, later on so they can have, still have a look at the, uh, the content of the slides later, right? Uh, Poncha, let me uh, reset the slides so that uh, maybe they can help fix the issue. Lah. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So maybe we're waiting for the resetting of slides. Um, we can have a look of at the questions. Uh, one of the questions would be, can you share with us any AI that has been used in TM? Um, the, the AI that has been used in uh, our organization, majority of it is related to the robots, um, the chatbots. Uh, so we do chatbot, we have chatbots to replace our live chats, um, live chat uh, people, but we still have our call center people, but we're doing uh, more of chatbots um, so they'll be able to um, uh, reduce the dependency on, on call center uh, for, for our customer um, journey, uh, customer experience. And, and also, but right now, I think what we need to do is to train our chatbots more so that they'll be uh, also intelligent enough to facilitate a lot of questions because the questions that we receive from customers are um, in a variety of areas. It's like a lot of areas. and. And I think our chatbots need to be trained and trained so that we'll be able to understand what the customers want. Yeah, okay. So is the slide clearer right now? Is it okay? Because actually the words are slightly, if you see the, the, the text is, uh, the, the font size is quite small because I wanna um, be able to uh, include all of these jobs inside here. So that's why if you see the emerging jobs, the, the, the font size is quite small. Well, it's okay, Poncha, yeah. uh, because uh, we can share this uh, slide in your digital career fair booth at, uh, right. yeah, at our website, www.digitalcareerfairs.com. All right, okay, sure, that would be great. Yeah. So at least you, can, you guys can download and have a look at it. Um, okay, um, so if you see, um, the, the next one will be engineering cloud computing. Well, the number of opportunities is not as huge as uh, content and data and AI. 
So it's only around 91, but it's still quite high, right? 91. Okay, there, there is that uh, volume, but um, data, AI, sales, marketing, and content would be the one that would be dominating um, uh, the, the, the future of work. Okay, and then next is, uh, next slide would be <clears throat> other areas. We have care economy, uh, which is um, in terms of the um, more on the medical side where we have medical transcriptionists, physical therapists. So the, there are certain things that cannot replace, uh, cannot be replaced by robots, right? Uh, you still have to, need to have um, therapists and, and so on to facilitate. Um, people uh, in, in terms of how they, uh, their, their health and so on. Um, the other areas um, that are also require some people and culture would be information technology recruiter, human resource partner, talent acquisition specialist, business partner. So it's more about business partner uh, in terms of how do we recruit people, how do we uh, acquire talents and so on. So for now, uh, we our artificial intelligence I think it's not that intelligent yet to, to assess people and to, to look into hiring and recruitment. So at this moment, we still require them um, in terms of people and culture, we still require all of these jobs. But in the future, maybe later, like over the next 10 years, we would be able to see um, this will be displaced by artificial intelligence and so on. And if you see all of this, right, all of the uh, emerging jobs, it requires all of us to upskill ourselves. And this is not something new because uh, if you see way back, uh, we have this, um, when people are using typewriters, right? So we have uh, very, very specific jobs. For example, stenography, uh, type, typist or something like that. So typist, stenographer and all those jobs are something which is very common. But over the years, when you have laptops, uh, notebooks and, and, and computers and so on, Stenographer become obsolete, typists become obsolete. So job obsolescence is something which is very common, but today it will be very, very rapid. So it's very, very important for all of us to upskill ourselves. Even myself, I feel I'm updated. And that's why I always have, um, I have my up-to-date learning plan for my own self. I do not share with anyone, but I just do it for my own because like last year, I realized that I am very updated um, actually, it was like last two years. So I think that uh, I was, I felt very outdated and I felt that I really need to improve my knowledge. So that was why I started to draw my learning plan. What is it that I need to acquire? So there is this one very good book, uh, Business Model U. It's actually here. I, I couldn't find it because I really like to read books. Um, it is inside my, my library. Uh, Business Model U is a very good book for you. To, to start drawing uh, what is it that you want to do at the end of the day? Uh, um, uh, the, who are your customers? What are the resources that you need to have? Who are your suppliers? How do you know, build your brand and so on? So that book is a very good book uh, that would help you to draw your own business model for your own self. And I did that. I did that like early last year. I did that and I followed it, but I didn't follow it uh, religiously because over a period of time, we realized that uh, there are changes that you need to make and so on. So always assess um, your, your own business model, your own self. So do that and upskill yourself. And there's a lot, a lot of um, opportunities for you to learn. Um, for you guys who haven't, uh, are not employed, I just had a discussion with MDEC just now. So uh, one of the head of, uh, head of ta digital talent uh, was sharing that Coursera, right? Um, Coursera has this um, online learning, but you have to register uh, by 31st of October. If you are unemployed, only if you are unemployed, uh, you can register with Coursera. There's a number of uh, learn, learning uh, modules um, under Coursera that are free for you to try out until 31st of December. But the due date for registration is 31st of October. Um, someone asked just now is the name of the book in the chat box. Uh, I think it's business model U, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, just a moment, I try and check if it's inside my, uh, my because I have a lot of books. Uh, this is another good book, business model generation, but it is for business. It is not for business model generation, it's for business, but it's using the same concept as, oh, yeah, I cannot show it. Okay, this is the same concept 
it has the same framework for this business model uh business model you just a moment if i have it inside here i can ah uh, yeah it's here because i really like to read books so all the books are just beside me so this book if you can see it yeah it's a very very good book so inside here there's a lot of uh um uh ways for you to design your career path there's another one more book which i think is very useful for you as well um but it's slightly expensive right master your next move this one is a book written by harvard mm, this one is another good book for you guys to read as well so it is written by harvard one of the professors in harvard what so watkins michael d watkins so um they shared about how do you want to you know when you want to start your work um, how do you want to go about doing it? And then, you know, when you want to make your next move, how do, are you going to be very successful in your next move? Um, and uh, this book is actually a companion to the first 90 days as well. That's the first 90 days book, uh, which is also useful for you guys if you uh, just started, you know, enrolling in a new, uh, a new um, organization, entering a new organization for work and so on. All right, um, so those two books are very useful for you, Business Model U. So I'll just share here again, uh, Business Model U. Um, and then another one is Mastering Your Next Move. Um, that will be useful as well. And uh, the first 90 days. Um, so if you see here, right, um, there's a lot of emerging jobs. There's a lot of new things that you need to learn and you need to start planning your competency upgrade. Um, so what are the things that you need to learn? Where are your gaps? You need to also start learning where you are uh, designing your future career path. Where is it that you want to be? And uh, how do you want to uh, go about uh, achieving that? Uh, so that's very, very important. And then understand uh, where are the competencies that you need to, uh, to build so that you'll be able to uh, be better in the areas that you want to work on. Like, for example, like me, I, I, I do learning every quarter. For example, like, um, I realized that I need to upskill myself. So um, early last year, I, I what I did was I um, enrolled in INSEAD, INSEAD uh, um, Digital Strategy, Building Digital Partnership Ecosystem and Strategy in the Age of Digital Disruption. And uh, what I did was um, I studied those, those areas and I really, really studied hard. I studied really hard uh, because I think when you want to study, make sure that you, you create a mark. Um, so that people recognize, so people from INSEAD recognizes, and um, I was the only Malaysian who got a distinction from that particular program, but it, it was like, it was, it's really important to make sure that you get uh, good outcomes from your study, so that then um, it's good in your CV, and then you'll be able to try to see how best you can apply those knowledge, um, so one of the things that you can do to apply those knowledge would be um, digital is very, very uh, interesting because then you can apply it on your own. For example, if you want to do your own blog, uh, you can, you know, um, uh, have Bluehost as, uh, as one of the uh, area that, uh, server that you can host your own blog, for example. So you can apply whatever you do um, uh, in the free platforms that are available. For example, if you want to explore about Amazon, Amazon right? Uh, there is an Amazon, Amazon app, so AWS app that you can uh, download and install it in your, in your laptop or your handphone so that then you can explore the cloud solution. Inside Amazon, AWS app is very interesting because then you can uh, learn more about uh, cloud. Uh, you can learn about uh, how to do um, IoT uh, related things and, and so on. So you can learn a lot. Uh, so those are examples of the platforms that you can use to enrich yourself, okay? Um, and don't worry, for example, if you're a lawyer and so on, you can also learn about digital things. And so you become a lawyer with very uh, with digital savvy, a um, uh, lawyer who is digital savvy. All right, so then we go to the next slide, uh, which is the impact of future of work. So the future of work uh, has quite a number of impacts. In, uh, four of these areas. One is in terms of tasks. In terms of, uh, of the, in terms of the benefits of it, it will help to improve task efficiency and automation. And uh, there will be decline in manual processes. So a lot of things are automated. And the truth is automation is really wonderful. Like, I really love if a lot of my things can be automated. So you can deliver things within five minutes. When your boss asks, five minutes, it's done. So if you can really learn automation, that would be great. 
And then um, when, uh, when there is this automation and robotics, right? Um, there is an increased collaboration between human and robots. Do not reject robots, make them your friends so that then you can, you know, you can use them in the best possible way uh, to increase your own efficiency. All right. And then digital, uh, if you can use uh, digital, you can use, um, increase the use of artificial intelligence um, um, so that you'll be able to make it less daunting. Okay, make, make artificial intelligence your friend. Uh, make robots your friend, learn, learn as much as possible about them so that it's not so daunting. Um, because I think learning will eliminate fear. Um, I just want to share just a recent example. Uh, for example, like uh, my son, he entered a virtual national robotic competition. And I don't really know about EV2 programming or Mindstorm programming. So it's very uh, confusing to me because there's a lot of systems that you have to, uh, you have to upload a lot of software you have to use. But the moment I know how to use it, it becomes very easy. And that's where you can uh, innovate and so on. So the first step to overcome the barrier of fear in digital is to just give it a try and try to understand it. The moment you understand, then you will start to look at how to innovate and so on. Um, so it's very important to do that. Uh, try to use it, try to understand. Uh, and then you need to harness the power of data. So that you can use it uh, best, uh, define the best engagement and productivity, improvement on the projects, and uh, uh, if, uh, if, when we have digital, right? There's a lot of uh, co-working spaces. You don't really need large offices. You can work from anywhere. And uh, last time there was this um, uh, Facebook and Google, if I'm not mistaken, they mentioned that they will do work from anywhere. Uh, until next year, if I'm not mistaken. So with that, you break the geographical barrier. So you can work around anywhere around the world. So for example, if you're looking for a job, right? It's not necessary that you have to look for a job in Malaysia. You can look for companies outside Malaysia who also um, you know, embrace digital workforce. Um, so you can, you can do your work globally. And for example, like uh, I used to work with McKinsey. Um, McKinsey, they have this, they do a lot of slide design. design. They, they design the slide, they do stock takes and everything um, in one place. And then they send it to India. So people in India will start drawing the slides and so on and pass it back to us. So you see that this is already like global workforce. So your workforce, the area of work uh, or uh, area that you apply for work is not necessarily contained within Malaysia. It can be like you can work, uh, you, are, you can be in Malaysia, but you can work for a company in Switzerland, for example. But you need to search for those companies. I'm not so sure which company would uh, do that. But I think Facebook and Google would, would have that uh, job opportunities for global workforce. But more and more global workforce will be coming in soon. So, so don't worry. What is important is for all of you to upskill yourself, to make sure that you are, uh, you're keeping yourself abreast with the latest developments. Um, and, and don't say that, hey, I'm an accountant, I can't do digital. I just want to share with you that I have a few of my colleagues uh, who's currently uh, running digital squads, like uh, UI UX designer, journey designer, and some of them are app designer. Um, one of my app designer, uh, our app designer uh, was formerly an accountant and another one was a lawyer. So, you know, like digital doesn't really matter if you're a lawyer or if you're an accountant, but what is important is if you really, really are passionate about it. All right. Okay. And then the next one is that uh, people. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> okay. It's about the people, right? People, um, it's about increasing need for learnability and new skills. Uh, because as, as we go um, move forward uh, in terms of digital, there will be very, very fierce competition for talents. And talents are very scarce because not many people have the right skill set. So it's very important for us to upskill ourselves. And time is very important. So we really need to make sure that the time that we have, we really focus on the skills that are required in the market. And uh, you need to reshape tra traditional management where we need to focus on trust and empowerment especially in digital world, we really need to empower people and internal communication and collaboration is very crucial. And just to share with all of you, although there's a lot of unemployment in today's world, there is also a shortage in talent. For example, like in 2020, by 2030, right? It is expected that there will be a global talent shortage of about 85 million people. 
So it is, it is it's like a, an irony, right? You have here, you have unemployment and here you have shortage of talent. So what, what we need to do is we really need to understand what are the, are talent, the requirements for talent that we upskill ourselves. And, and if you see in the previous slides from the World Economic Forum, um, there's a lot of uh, areas on, on the, the, uh, the future talent requirements. So you can really look into which are the areas that, that suits you best and try to find an area that really drives the passion and, and the fire inside you. Because otherwise you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to learn more about it. So, so if you're interested in social media marketing, look into social media marketing. If you're into data analytics, go into data analytics and so on. And like I mentioned, just now there will be flexibility. There will be increased flexibility in location, offices, and operations. So geography is no longer a boundary. So you can work uh, for all you know in like the 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 most um, you know deserted place on earth. But as long as they're in the internet, you can be, you can be connected and you can work with any with the respective companies that support this. But the trending this is the trending is going to grow. Uh, in terms of geography is no longer a boundary, in terms of the flexible workforce and so on. And uh, flexibility in hiring freelancers. Like in UK, there's a lot of companies that are hiring freelancers. So if that company supports uh, freelancing from Malaysia, for example, then why not? You can just give it a try. Um, so, so, so the world is just like, you know, your market uh, for employment is very huge. There is no longer geographical boundary and so on. All right, okay, then next slide would be um, preparing ourselves, okay? Uh, we need to have learning agility that like I've mentioned just now. Um, learning agility is very important, but there's five areas in learning agility that you need to prepare yourself with. First is to be aware of yourself. Understand your strengths and areas of improvements. And then uh, if you wanna assess your strength and areas improvement, you can use the business model you book um, as a guiding principle on what are the areas that you want to address, uh, assess the strength and areas improvement. That would be uh, who are your partners. Um, partners doesn't mean spouse, yeah. If partners you mean that your the partner, thought partner is on, uh, and then who are your, how do you can create your um, brand presence and so on. So address, assess it from those areas and look at where are the areas that you need to improve. Where are the areas that you're strong at, strong at? So leverage your strengths, work on improving your um, uh, weaknesses. Okay, and then you need to have mental agility. That is very, very, very important because um, you need to be curious. You need to be able to understand unusual and unique viewpoints um, in problems and, and how do you solve a problem in an innovative way. So try as much as possible to to, uh, to problem solve, you can just practice it in any part of your life, any day, every day, you know, find a problem, okay, how can we solve it? How find a problem, how can you solve it? Because all of these, um, all of these five areas requires practice, all right? And then people agility is all about how are we being open towards others and um, how are we able to interact with various types of people to achieve our objective? Because just to share with all of you, as we move um, uh, to, like uh, as we move forward, right? More and more um, uh, collaboration or agile way of working. Um, agile way of working is becoming the norm. And agile way of working, people may not be reporting to you, but you may need to deliver results uh, with the people who are not reporting to you. So that's why <laughs> you must be able to interact with all sorts of people to achieve your objective and lead in a better way. Um, so um, just, just to share, I think uh, right now you guys are very lucky because in today's world, you can learn from all sorts of uh, platforms. You can learn from INSEAD uh, knowledge, IMD knowledge. You can also learn from Medium, Quora, uh, Reddit, and so on. So for example, at leadership, you can learn from Knowledge of Water, and you can learn from Harvard. And just to share with all of you, like Harvard, right? They have this EDX platform where you can learn for free. For example, right now, I'm learning Python for free at Harvard. If I want to get a certificate from Harvard, I'll just pay 149 US dollar and I will be certified uh, for as long as I complete the assignments and so on. So there's a lot of platform for you to learn, uh, for example, on how to lead in a better way and then practice it. And you can practice it not necessarily at work, you can practice it at home, you can practice it with your friends and so on. And, and you can also start to create your own business model and try to drive um, a new 
uh, uh, a new business model uh, and, and practice. For example, like recently I interviewed one person because I'm also a panelist interview for scholars, right? Um, so one of the person that I interviewed, he, uh, he, was, he just finished his SPM and he's a very good debater. So what he did was he created English debate classes uh, for, for other people to train them how to be good debaters. Um, so from there, he generates revenue. So even after Form 5, uh, around 18, at 18 years old, he already has some revenue generation um, uh, sources uh, of, of a revenue generation business. So you can, you can try to use your passion and try to apply and, and see how best you can create a business model from your passion and then uh, drive outcome and revenue. And that can be uh, included inside your CV and, and, and can be an area where people look for as well. And then change agility is very important because if you see today, um, change is, is, is a norm. Change is a norm, uh, new knowledge is a norm. And, and so it's very important for us to be able to, um, to drive change, to embrace change. And, and uh, embracing change requires internal um, understanding of ourselves. How do we react to change? So I will share with you afterwards how we react to change. And then the next one is result, result agility. How do you drive outcome uh, and produce solutions uh, and inspire other people's action and drive a better result? So results are, are important. So people look for, uh, employers look for these areas um, when, when they interview, uh, when they interview others. So how are you aware of your own self, your own areas of weakness, your own strength? And just to share with you, when you want to answer uh, an interview question, right? You need to answer from a star model perspective. So you have the situation, what was the situation? What was the thing that are uh, the tasks that you do uh, and the actions that you do start P tasks and actions are will be the uh, result of the action. So make it very structured when you want to answer interview questions so that we're able to relate um, or relate to what was done and what was the outcome, what were the outcomes. All right, and then next slide would be on uh, the areas of focus when building your skills. So there's a lot of areas. If you see here, right, um, majority of people focus on technical, but don't just focus on technical. You need to have uh, knowledge in visioning. Visioning will be something that's related to strategy. So this is an example of digital related knowledge, but there's a lot more. The truth is like technical, right? I just recently did a, because I'm also overseeing digital literacy within the organization. So I had a chat with uh, our digital team. Uh, it's 145 knowledge in technical. So that's so many things that needs to be learned, right? But we need to prioritize what's important. But don't forget, although you learn the technical, you need to also have visioning knowledge. You need to have inter and intrapersonal knowledge and you need to have conceptual knowledge. And all of this more knowledge, Oh, okay, what is TNA? TNA is task and action. What are the tasks that was done? What was the action um, uh, of it? Out of it, uh, out of the task. Yeah. All right, most welcome. All right, so so these are the knowledge that you have to acquire. This is an example uh, of the knowledge, um, but there's a lot more um, uh, that you can uh, learn because knowledge is so huge. The, the, the competency, areas of competency so huge. So you need to prioritize. So you need to tailor uh, with what you want to be at the end of the next five years, the next 10 years and so on. And that business model, you can also help to, to, to help you in designing the competency that you need to build over the next few years. All right. Um, and then the next slide will be um, more on building your skills. It's not only about structured training. It's also about learning from others and learning from experience. And if you see the percentage, it is relating to the impact. 70% uh, is really learning from experience. So it means that the highest impact is actually when you learn from experience. If you don't have a chance to do it at work, you can apply it elsewhere. For example, in, in especially in the future of in digital, right? Um, you can use your Instagram to apply social media marketing, for example. Try to see what can work so that you can drive 100,000 followers, for example, um, or, um, or um, 
you can um, learn from others on the job and, and also uh, learn from others here. So you can have coaches, mentors and so on. You do network. So there's a lot of communities out there. For example, uh, UIUX, right? There's a UIUX community, learn from them. Uh, you can also be a member of, uh, of associations. Um, you can be a role model um, and, and, and learn from podcasts and so on. And I think um, I would say that coaching and mentoring is very critical. Uh, like for me, I have a lot of um, a lot of um, um, coaches and mentors. Sometimes I just like, muka tak malu. Can you be my mentor? <laughs> After I know that person, I'll just ask him, "Can you be my mentor?" Uh, and, and they will, usually because I know them already, so they will say yes. Um, so just just you know approach people. But you need to know whether that person has a mentor, uh, mentor traits or not. If they are not willing, then then just no. All right, um, don't have to take them as a mentor. And then structured training is only ten percent. So all the classes, all the conferences, webinars. After you learn, you will definitely forget. So that's why you have to practice and you have to learn from others as well. Okay, I think time is running out. I have a few more slides. Okay, I'll just go uh, very fast. Um, next is um, next will be. Uh, your competency. Um, you need to have, um, this is what my dad uh, shared with me. Um, my dad is my mentor as well, uh, because he's, uh, he started from a non-executive and he finished, he retired as a deputy CEO and chairman of a company. Um, so he built his competency. Uh, he really uh, taught me a lot of things. And uh, one of the things that he taught me that I really, really think is very useful and I'm sharing with all of you because I think this is very, very important is that you need to build your competency, you follow the our best principle. So this is like um, having this, uh, having this uh, operations, you need to have a, a, a variety of operations knowledge, but you need to have your forte. And as you go higher up the management, you have a variety of knowledge as well. So the knowledge is not only through learning, but as I've shared just now, it's true on the job as well. So for example, like me, in, in, uh, when I started, I did system technology, and then I did customer experience. And after that, I went and I do business intelligence, I do market planning, and that was in the operations. So market planning, business strategy, group strategy, um, product development, program management, and so on. So every two to three years, I will rotate. And even during the job, that particular area of work, I would do a lot of stretch assignments. So that's why you have to stretch yourself. And I really believe that human beings are uh, actually have unlimited capabilities. Mm, they can do a lot of things at the same time, but we need to build our high speed learning capabilities. Uh, like I, I used to send my son to Shishida and I think that really helps because during Shishida classes, they teach you how to use your right brain and how to combine right brain and left brain so that from there you will be able to, you know, do things faster and better. So I, I use that knowledge to, and apply it to my area of work. So, so you can also do that. You can, uh, when you do your current job, you do your stretch assignments as well. So my, what my dad always say is that do your best in your current job, build your competencies two steps ahead. So when you want to build competencies two steps ahead, it means that you have to learn about the things that you want to be um, in the next two, few years. And you do stretch assignments in those areas of work. Okay. And then you need to have your forte. So your forte will be something that you specialize in. That people will know that this is what you, uh, you are very good at. So like, for example, at my forte, uh, in my LinkedIn, people say that I'm very good in strategy and business planning and management, if I'm not mistaken. So that is what people perceive as, and that is, uh, that is actually at years of uh, applying those knowledge. So, so you need to plan that. You need to map this with your business model you and the competencies that you need to build. Um, so that you will be able to have uh, a holy, be a holistic person and achieve your uh, career aspiration in the long run. All right, so if you see here, it's about charting your competency. Okay, and then the next slide will be more about managing change, if I'm not mistaken. Oh no, these are the learning platforms. I think, I think you guys didn't know more than me. Some of this, I got it from my son, for example, at Reddit and so on. And, and don't uh, worry about being inquisitive. Just ask questions. If you don't know, learn. Learn from anyone. Uh, I learn from the non-executives I work with. I learn from my children. I learn from people outside. I, and I learn from everyone. I interact with everyone. So don't worry. Just you can like, learn from anyone um, so around you. All right. Um, then next is, oh, sorry. I just want to share this Eureka. 
Jason Resis Eureka is a very good platform for you to learn how other people uh, submit their business model, business plans on for their for their new business ventures. So, for example, if you want to open up a new business and so on, you can learn from eureka.com. So, uh, all of the real life uh, is a crowdfunding platform, you want to see it, for them to pitch uh, their business plan so that they can get a fund for their, uh, uh, for their business. All right, then next would be how do you manage change? Now, this is a very important slide as well. Uh, because this is how you react to a change. This is a normal change behavior. Uh, when you uh, face this change, the first thing that you do is there'll be denial. And then in the long run, we sabotage. But after you sabotage for so long, then perhaps you will accept and internalize. So if you see the change of, pro uh, change of productivity, the, more, the moment you deny, the productivity starts to drop. The moment you sabotage, it becomes uh, even worse. Uh, but if, when you accept, you will be better and the, the productivity will be, be even better than before the change. So these are the samples of questions that uh, for you to detect that which stage are you in. For example, like uh, when you're in denial stage, right? Um, so you say, yeah, this is not true, this is not happening, it's okay, I'll just ignore it and so on. But the moment you sabotage, it's like, why me? Why am I facing this? Is this a fair thing? And like you will start to talk to people and say that this is not really what is it and so on. For example, if you break up with your boyfriend, right, it's a very clear cut example. Denial is that when you break up with your boyfriend and you say, hey, um, my boyfriend's not breaking up with me. He still, he still loves me and so on. And then the moment you sabotage is when you eat a lot of ice creams and then you will just say that, hey, I'm gonna eat a lot of things so that, you know, and then cry and cry and cry, don't wanna go out and so on. But the moment you accept, that's why you say, hey, I." Yeah, my boyfriend broke up with me, so I have to accept it. That's why you start to, for example, like uh, be better and you know work out, make sure that you become a very hot lady or something like that. And and that's where uh, you become more productive and your fitness becomes better. You improve your knowledge and so on. And the moment you internalize um, the positive things that you do during the acceptance stage, then you become excellent in whatever you do. So this is a very important curve for you to understand that everyone may face this. But what is important is you need to reduce the time from denial and sabotage to acceptance. Uh, you need to reduce that time. For example, allow yourself to be set. For example, 15 to 30 minutes or, or the most one day, but then move on and then start asking questions in the acceptance stage. So how can I improve this? How can I make it better? Uh, how can I learn and grow from this and so on? Because the moment you accept, the brain will start thinking about taking actions and positive, positive uh, actions. That's where it will be better. It's okay to be sad, but don't take too long. Uh, don't dwell in it until it becomes months and years, and you know it will be. You will not be able to move forward. Okay. Then next will be, uh, next. Okay. These are some additional tips for you guys. Uh, first one is like use technology to simplify your tasks. Um, even better, you build your own platform just to simplify our values and have confidence to talk about digital technologies. Um, learn about it. Um, start small. Don't worry. Uh, as you grow, you'll be better. And then be a creative problem solver. Learn new business models, generate new ideas, build prototypes, be comfortable with failure, but you have to fix fast. Uh, fail fast, fix fast, uh, fail fast, learn fast, fix fast, and then build your online presence. So your online presence, have a LinkedIn account and post in your LinkedIn account. If you don't have time to write articles or you don't have ideas to write articles, post other people's articles first. But in the long run, try to write your own articles. Do your own videos. If you don't like writing, you can do your own videos. Um, and then um, create conversations on important and timely topics impacting the society and so on, so that you can create a brand presence across the internet. Um, there's another one actually, which is the brand presence, but I don't have it here uh, because there's a lot of, um, I, I have a lot more, which is like branding. How do you create your own personal brand? Why well, I, I think time is running out, so I don't have it inside the slide because there's a lot, a few more slides, but you can always text me in my LinkedIn. I can, I can share more about that. So, so the things that I share with you, some of it are based on my learning, some of it are based on what my mentor has shared with me. All right, okay, the next slide will be a poll, if I'm not mistaken, uh, would be on our next. Oh, okay. Um, so 
Well, you can post your questions. I, I think this, okay, uh, maybe you can do um, this poll, this only one poll, because I think time is running out. So you can share, like, are you ready for the future of work? Yes, no, or not sure? <coughs> Okay, the poll starts in one minute. Oh, maybe while doing that, right? I can share some books. Okay, thank you, Pansha, for sharing. All right, we are doing a poll right now. So um, just another 15 more seconds. So those who have not yet uh, voted, uh, go ahead and vote. Okay. Can Sorry I enter if I speak too fast. <laughs> Uh, it's fine. <laughs> I think I think we all get uh, it. I think we all get it. It's clear, pretty clear. Okay. okay so, all right. We're gonna close the poll now. All right. So you can see that we have sixty-one percent who are ready for the future. Oh, that's good. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, Poisha, we are going to the Q&A session. Do you want right. to take some of the questions? Okay, sure. So, will you be reading it or how, how, how does it go? Okay, let me read it out to you, yeah? Okay. Okay. I believe that you've already answered uh, no results question. Can you share with us any AI that has been used in TM? Ah, uh, yeah, that one I've shared just now, chatbot. Okay, yeah. let me just mark this and down. And also we have our AI for our, we call it SPICE, SPICE.AI. It's for our um, doing artific <laughs> artificial intelligence to help resolve customer problems. That one is in pilot stage. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we have a question here by, uh, oh, by Eja as well. Mm -hmm. Question three. How TM educates the chatbot engine in terms of product knowledge? Um, I think it's a different knowledge we have. Uh, I'm, I don't have the details of it, but they, we have chatbot trainers um, to train the, the chatbot. So it relates to the keywords that are commonly being used. Um, so what we do is that we have a pool of um, key questions from all the questions from customers. And then we, we uh, identify those keywords and then we, we use those keywords to train um, the chatbots. Okay. Yeah. That answers that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, we have one from Sayan Jana. Mm -hmm. Miss, I wanted to ask that with more advanced technology in the future, won't it threaten the jobs of people as robots are likely to take over many jobs and when entrepreneurs can get an opportunity to get their work done with just one long-term investments on robot, why would they keep an employee whom they have to pay every month? Okay, um, if you see just now, I have a slide where I shared about um, some of the key areas of work that are still required, uh, which robots cannot do. Uh, for example, like data scientists, because robots still require people to make them run. You need to have programs to run the robot. So you need to have robot designers. Um, until the day where robots can design their own robots, you know, that's where you still need people, a human to, uh, to design the robots, to design the AI algorithms and so on. So I think um, uh, there are certain jobs that will be obsolete 
but there are also other jobs that will still remain or that are needed, uh, like what I have shared in the uh, previous slides. That there are seven future areas of, of work and that are still required in the future. Okay. So uh, once again, for those who have, uh, have issues with the slides, we will post it up in TM's booth at uh, Digital Career Festival website, yeah? Mm -hmm. All right, are there any further questions or how? Yeah, there is, um, just scrolling down. Yeah. So the ones that, that have okay. questions, I am. All right. Okay, here we go. This is by uh, Muhammad Firoz Mokhtar. Hi, Ms. Shaliza, under people and culture cluster, how are we going to define competency framework other than upskilling the person? For example, competency framework for scientists or mathematician or even HR personnel itself. It will be, a diffi mm -hmm. it will be difficult because we don't have any framework to refer as reference. So his, questions, his question is, how are we defining, how are we defining competency framework other than upskilling the person? I see. Okay. Um, what what we are currently doing because I'm also involved in competency mapping. Uh, what we do is first, um, the step is we identify the job scope. What is it that a person needs to deliver at the end of the day? From there, uh, from the job scope, you'll be able to identify what are the key areas uh, that will help them to deliver that work. For example, uh, for a salesperson, uh, to be able to deliver uh, sales and revenue, right? He needs to have, uh, so we have the technical, the visioning and the conceptual and so on, right? So in terms of the technical knowledge that they need to have, they need to have sales, um, sales uh, uh, product knowledge, sorry. So uh, product knowledge so that they will be able to explain about the product to customers in a better way. And then they need the intro and interpersonal skills, for example, they need to have negotiation skills. Uh, they need to be able to have a relationship building skills. And then maybe leading leadership skills so that you'll be able to lead other salespeople um, and take over the management so that they'll be able to manage other stakeholders in driving the sales. Because when you do sales, you need to interact with pricing team, with product team, and then you have to um, interact with customers. So you need to manage the stakeholders in a different way. And there are, you know, there are also some customers are very, very uh, demanding. And, and you know, how are you able to manage that person? So influential. Influencing strategy will be useful. So, um, so that will be intra-interpersonal. What about the visioning skills? The visioning skill is that he needs to be able to understand um, the business model uh, of the uh, organization. Uh, sorry, business model is more a conceptual. Um, so the business model innovation is about uh, the company business model and how can he tailor, retrofit the solution to facilitate the customer um, in, uh, in driving growth. And uh, in, in terms of uh, the overall, the visioning will be about understanding the, um, how do we, um, on understanding strategy, so they'll be able to, because when you're a salesperson, you may need to speak to CEOs, you may need to speak to technical people, so you need to also understand um, how do we uh, dissect strategy and uh, translate it into value drivers. Uh, so those are, those are examples of the key competencies they are required for sales. So you need to first start with understanding the job description. If let's say you are a HR person who is, uh, who is responsible to design the competency and you don't have the competency mapping, right? Um, you can always go to Jora, for example, or any job street online or anything. There is a job description. The job description will provide you an overview of that particular job. What is it that they have to deliver? And from there, you'll be able to understand what are the key competencies that are required. Like for us, what we did was we, we have this, uh, we work with Tower Watson uh, and we do competency mapping uh, to, to understand uh, the competencies that are required by respective, um, uh, respective roles. So it's, it's quite interesting to, to do that. And you can do the competency mapping for your own self as well. All right. Okay. 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 So, Puansha, do you have one more uh, time for one more question? Can. Okay. So, we have one by Sarah. Mm -hmm. Salam and hi, Puansha. Thanks for the great sharing. What is your advice on uh, behavioral competency required to prepare for future of work? Okay. Behavioral, right? Behavioral would be more on. Um, if you go back to the learning agility, right? Uh, the learning agility slides. 
Um, so the, the areas will be uh, self-awareness and then people agility where you are able to work with other people. Um, and then uh, problem solver. So you need to have, be a good problem solver. And uh, also, um, what's the other one? Eh? There's, there's five, if I'm not mistaken. Just a moment, I, I open up. So there's five, right? Uh, inside that, the uh, agility, people. Mm, agility. Yep. So you have people learning agility. Uh, people agility, uh, self-awareness, mental agility, uh, change agility. So those are among the behavioral competencies that you need to build uh, for your own self. So that you can prepare yourself for the future of work. Because the future of work is all about dealing with uh, uncertainties. Uh, in VUCA, right? VUCA, volatile, uncertain, complex, and... Um, uh, and um, VUCA is... Um, is is, is uh, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. So when when you do and when you're dealing with future of work, it's volatile, it's uncertain, it's complex, and is and also ambiguous. So you need to uh, be able to experiment. You need to be able to embrace change fast. You need to be able to fail fast, fix fast, learn fast, and you need to uh, be able to work with people so that you can drive outcomes together and be a very good problem solver. All right. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I think that's it for the questions and answers. Hmm. So we're going to have to wrap this up. Yeah, um, uh, I'll pass it back to you, Poncha. Okay, uh, thank you so much uh, for, for the questions. So thank you, everyone. So I'll go to the next slide. Um, please vote for us. Um, so we have this uh, vote for TM, share and win. And there's a lot of attractive prizes uh, for you um, if you vote. Uh, for for the 2021 Graduates Choice Award, um, you can just uh, scan the QR code and then vote for TM. You can do it now, um, and um, then we can move to the next slide. Yeah. So we'll do okay. a one minute, one minute sure. voting. Or, yeah. All right. Sure. Okay, and uh, also uh, for those who uh, are still here with us, uh, don't go anywhere yet because we will share with you a free personal profile analysis complimentary from TM. Well, so go ahead mm -hmm. and vote for TM for us as the Graduate's Choice Award and we will be sharing the free PPA on the next slide. Yeah, that personality profile analysis will be useful for you. Then you are able to understand your own self and, um, and you know, look at your strengths and areas of improvement. So it relates to the self-awareness, which is part of the learning agility. Okay, so you can right. vote right now in, uh, by scanning the QR code. Uh, you can also vote for TM later when you have yeah. time at, uh, yeah. at TM's booth at digitalcareerfest.com. Yeah. So we'll be sharing with you the PPA. Yep. All right. Okay. Oh. So yeah, we we have uh, we have virtual booth for career tips and job vacancies at uh, this career fest. Uh, we have the Talent Bank Digital Career Festival. Uh, which is until 30th of November, and Graduate Aspire, uh, which will end uh, on the 27th, which is today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, okay. you can, uh, but you can also follow us um, oh. at Twitter and LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, for the free personality test, you can scan this QR code. Um, and the um, offer expires until 18th of December. Actually, the personality profile analysis is quite... It's quite costly, but you know, it's something which is very useful for you. And I think I value all of you, your participation here. So um, that's why we're giving you this for free. So don't miss this chance, yeah, everyone. Yeah. And then you can, you know, you can put the strengths inside the analysis in your CV as well. From, from the personality profile, you can put the strength that, uh, that will come up from personality analysis and you can incorporate it inside your CV. All right. Okay, so don't worry. We'll leave this screen for you after the session. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, we're going to leave it on for probably about another 15 minutes. So don't worry about that. So we just have uh, going to wrap this up with this next slide. Yeah, so we have another Cairo webinar. Uh, this guy here is my colleague, <laughs> Yusman Amaran. He's the head of product and innovation at TM1. Uh, so he oversees all the products at Enterprise. Uh, so he really, he's an interesting person. He is actually my former schoolmate. <laughs> And uh, he'll be sharing a little bit more about reinventing yourself, be adaptable and future ready. And I think you should listen to him because it's a little bit interesting talk. And he has a lot of ideas and, you know, he drives a lot of new product innovation within the organization, especially for enterprise customers. So it's going to be on the 5th of November at 10 a.m. So don't, um, don't forget to join the, uh, his, his talk. Okay. Okay, so thank you very much for your time and do follow us at uh, LinkedIn and Facebook and vote for us. So really appreciate all the questions that you have. Uh, in case you have any further questions, you can connect to me and my LinkedIn and you can share your questions there. Um, I do have Instagram, but I don't share it with everyone. It's, it's, although it's public, but I don't really share it um, because LinkedIn, you need to connect, but don't worry, I'll always connect. Connect. Uh, I will connect with you if you um, connect with me, and then you can share your messages. Then, all right. Okay. Thank you, and please take care, stay safe, and to those who are applying for jobs, I wish you all the best. Um, I'm sure that you'll be able to to get uh, some a job that really fits your aspiration, and um, do work hard and learn, continue uh, to drive innovation and so on. So, thank you very much again. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Pansha. Take care and stay safe. All right. Thank you. Oh, sorry. This one was Ellie Point. Maybe I'll, I'll text you. Um, I'll text the question of Ellie Point. Someone asked for Ellie Point. What is okay. Ellie? It's okay. Maybe I'll text for Persia, not Nema, Nemia or something like that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so as promised, um, if you guys missed out the QR code to get the free PPA, here it is. And um, I'll leave this screen for you all um, for about 15 minutes. And if not, that there's the link that you can sh which I have shared with you earlier on. And you can go and do your free personal profile analysis. Yeah. All right. So... We have come to the end of this session and I want to thank you all for attending this session. Uh, do keep up with the rest of our webinar at uh, our website, www.digitalcareerfest.com and go to the webinar schedule and you can see our upcoming webinar. Yep. So with that, I will end the session. Thank you everyone and stay safe. Goodbye. Goodbye. Take care.